morning, everybody. It's Friday, November 5th. I'm Charlie Fink with Ted Chilowitz. It's This Week in XR. Thanks for joining us this morning. Great to see you in the real yesterday, Ted. It was really an interesting couple of days where we actually, after what, no, over, I think it's kind of roughly 600 days, 600 days of the virtual, uh, we actually had our physical presence. We did a a great talk with uh, Vicky Dobbs Beck from ILM X Lab uh, on stage at Infinity, which we might be able to run uh, on the podcast one day. And it was a really fun couple of days to actually, you know, hopefully and theoretically safely, we were all vaccinated and everybody maintained their safe distance and it seemed to work pretty well. So I, uh, apparently there were a lot more people watching it virtually yeah. than were there in person, which is an interesting indicator both for AWE next week, but also the potential trend of conferences to become hybrid and therefore uh, much more accessible. Uh, it may mean that there will be fewer people in the real, but you know, I would take 50% less people in the real for 3000% more people watching it virtually. Because yeah. the most important part, of course, is, is uh, for me, is just the learning and the networking and the connecting with people, um, which I, I was gonna say, I felt like I had seen you yesterday. Yeah. Even though it had been two week, years because right? we spent so much time together in, in the virtual world. Yeah, it is interesting how those worlds are meshing together. We are so connected. The way that video communication works so seamlessly now. Um, and then when we see each other in the real world, it's just the real world is just kind of an extension of what we've been doing in the virtual world, which is essentially why there is so much energy and so much money and so much resources being poured in uh, from these large, what I refer to as tech utainment companies now, uh, that all <laughs> tech your vision of the future, right? Um, I love that. Yeah. The, the other thing I heard yesterday, which I loved, I, I don't know if you were there, I was talking to one of the guys from the, oh God, what's the name of the company, uh, that does the entertainment inside of cars. Yeah, Holoride, right, Chris. Yeah, right. Yeah. Holoride, and so they said they were working on the Holoverse, or the Motorverse. Yes. The motorverse, motor right? Everything's got a verse, and uh, you know, I, I think they'll be a great guest to have. We we kind of cultivated some new guests at Infinity. Yes, we did. So like, yeah. so, and, and our guest, we have a superstar guest today. I should have led with that. John Snotty, head of XR for Disney, can't wait to hear what they're working on. We were talking yesterday about the um, Galaxy's Edge, yes, uh, and uh, and how far they had pushed that using all sorts of different tools. And, and I would consider that XR entertainment, uh, you know, largely, uh, you know, obviously location based at an extremely sophisticated <laughs> level. Uh, but it is remarkable what they're doing with digital technology now layering it into the real world. So here we are, Charlie, the end of 2021. So, uh, so well, let's let's get to the top of the news and then we'll jump into our chat with John. OK, uh, Microsoft decided that it wasn't up to Facebook to <laughs> define the metaverse and they okay. introduced um, Microsoft Mesh for Teams. Mm -hmm. uh, so their process of putting people into shared simulation, if they are respectively in VR and AR with a HoloLens, now has a third aspect to it where you can be uh, uh, in Teams from inside of Mesh or simply uh, use XR and uh, you know the computer tracking uh, to turn yourself into an avatar and participate in that way. In fact, you could be in, in VR and do it. Uh, Nadella said uh, that uh, as the digital and physical worlds come together, we are creating an entirely new platform layer, which is the metaverse. In a sense, the metaverse enables us to embed computing in the real world and real world computing being bringing real presence to any digital space. So uh, interesting, um, interesting contrast with the embodied internet that mm -hmm. you're looking out of instead of looking in on. Um, yeah, and, and, and Microsoft has you know, effectively been working on this for many generations in some form and fashion, right? And over the last couple of years, when they announced the first HoloLens into the second HoloLens, they start to take their hardware foray into it and start to explore and experiment head-worn sort of blending of the real and artificial worlds. They also see that people are migrating across to this idea of you know, the, their business and work and productivity lives starting to become more and more virtual. And that is absolutely Microsoft's lane. So they know that they cannot just let it sit and let 
Meta, Facebook, and everyone else just own that and take that over. It's yeah. that, that's their space, and they want to well, make sure. CNET, CNET points out that Microsoft owns the office. Correct. So the whole idea of Facebook Microsoft launched alone. Facebook launched workrooms. They just let it go. <laughs> but the metaverse thing and trying to pull the office and the home office into the middle of that, I think meant that they had to respond more specifically. Yeah, I would they imagine- 250 million users of Teams. Right. So, so this is where you get into this platform war between, um, you know, for the metaverse with Facebook facing off against Apple and Google. And I think it's, and Microsoft. And I think it's gonna be very hard uh, for people like Microsoft and Apple to play nice with Facebook. Well, yeah. And you and I've been talking about this for a number and, of years, the landscape, the, the, you know, the, the value of that compute landscape and the value of them participating in the exploration zones of what it means when people can, you know, for years, people have talked about in the future, we won't have to get on planes to do business travel quite as much. And that will change the economics, right? Those three companies you mentioned and a litany of others that are supporting it are all working on that metaphor of like, less physical embodiment of things, more digital embodiment of things. It's ultimately, you know, multi-trillion dollars of, of commerce that will move around the globe slightly differently. So of course, Microsoft has got to be in there. There's no question. Right? There's, you know, it also shows you what huge institutional advantages um, Microsoft and indeed Apple have right. um, going, you know, over Facebook. Yes, of course. I mean, sort of like, how does Facebook really think they're going to worm their way into work past Microsoft? Yeah. And I, I think, you know, largely Facebook is happy to just put their sort of finger into all of these things and see what comes out the other side, right? Just kind of like touch it, figure it out, see if there's a there there. If it ends up that really gaming and entertainment is their strength and socialization in the modern world, which is clearly their strength in the previous world, ends up being their strength and the enterprise and work stream stuff is left to the other companies, that's probably all ultimately fine for them, right? And they'll maintain their valuation, probably still grow their valuation. So it's an interesting time to study it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Now, uh, the other thing that was going on this week is the DigiLens, uh, yeah. the company that is, is working on um, augmented reality lenses and is funded uh, by Samsung, Niantic, Sony and other blue chip investors just raised another 50 million, mm -hmm. uh, bringing their total haul to 100 million and valuing the company at half a billion dollars. Yeah, I've been up at their factory a couple of times, seen the work that they're doing with these special substrates and the, the way that they're essentially very much focused on the ultra, ultra lightweight, not necessarily super highly sophisticated, you know, rich graphics right now, but of course that will probably come over time. But the kind of useful graphics layer that a lot of people think are going to be sort of the first step in wearable uh, mixed reality. Uh, and, you know, it's it's remarkable what they're doing and, and they continue to raise capital and, and, and push it out there. But by an order of magnitude, you know, $50 million is not Microsoft Facebook level capital. No. Um, Facebook no. is dedicated $10 billion to the effort. And part of that is mixed reality. Who knows where that all fits into the puzzle, I, right? I, I think that there is, I mean, first of all, I think Samsung continues to be interested in glasses, poss possibly being in, um, you know, an OEM for somebody, mm -hmm. you know, well, we've, so seen, I, we've seen, a, we've seen some touch points and some kind of slight yeah. public release touch points of Facebook prototype glasses. So we know they're in this game. Of course they're in this game. They're so so DigiLens is gonna get in with one of those guys. They just have a prototype. Somebody else has to manufacture it. Somebody else has to integrate it. You know, it's one little piece, but uh, I think, you know, to look, to take our lessons from our uh, ill-fated voyage version one with Magic Leap, you can't do it all yourself. It's too much. It's too expensive. Uh, too many things can go wrong. It's distracting. Um, so I think it's it makes sense for a company like Samsung. Also, Samsung great at fostering innovation all over the place as, as it angles not only for technology for itself, but you know as it sees opportunity, investment opportunities, and they've been you know, very opportunistic and, um, you know, pretty prescient in their bets, so. Right. Well, look, acquisition culture, you know, mm, for the last 40 years yeah. has been a mainstay of the of the large compute industry is, yeah. you know, we, we're not going to do everything ourselves. Let young companies be who they are, 
experiment and explore with things that are well out of our realm. And then when it starts to become useful enough, we'll acquire them. We can, you know, if you study and look at the patents and all the companies that Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, Google, Facebook have acquired, uh, it's, it's stunning, you know, how many that they, they, they put into their arsenal. Some so, just never see the light of day again, which is kind one, of interesting too. One last so story, sorry to say it also involves Meta, uh, mm -hmm. is that they went ahead and bought uh, Within, which makes Supernatural. Right. Uh, Within, created by uh, music director, uh, music video director, Chris Milk. I, I guess he did commercials and other stuff. Talented, yeah, Chris, is a, talented Chris, guy. Chris is a friend of mine. I've known him for years. I've been a big supporter of, of Supernatural in its whole- well, So let me tell the story for people real quickly before we right. go to John, is that of course he was making 360 videos, you know, back in the Samsung year days, right? There, there was no VR content other than 360 videos. But they quickly realized, uh-oh, 360 videos is not going to really be a business. Mm -hmm. So they tried other things. They were doing educational AR. You know, they were trying all sorts of other things. Uh, and then they came up with this idea for Supernatural, which is a Peloton-like subscription for doing mm -hmm. fitness in VR, which and I tried it. And I was like, damn, well, that is fitness. But are people really going to, you know, sweat their way through a full workout in VR? And the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a regular user of it. I use it at yeah. least a few times a week. Yeah, just introduced. Yes, it's been a big hit. And you know what happens when you develop a hit game for the Oculus Quest head? Yeah, Oculus buys you. Right. <laughs> exactly. And well, congrats, at, congrats to Chris and the team at Within. Yeah. Um, you know, that was a hit. You know, Supernatural was a Hail Mary pass, and they won the Super Bowl because of it. Well, and if you look at the, you know, when Supernatural first came out, there were a lot of obvious connection points to the style and the style of gameplay and fitness-esque uh, experience that Beat Saber had. It was very similar in certain ways. And of course, Beat Saber went through that same mode where it became really popular. And Facebook, now Meta, recognized that uh, they should own that and continue to cultivate that. And this is just a natural extension of those type of fitness experiences. So, so the head fun. of VR at Disney is in our waiting room. So okay, let's let bring him in. in. I don't want to make John in. wait. Let's bring him in. So yesterday, Ted and I were talking about Galaxy's Edge. Um, and uh, and the fur, Ted's first observation, which I thought right on was right on the money, is I'm in the physical real world, but this is virtual reality. Yeah. yeah. It's a very XR forward entertainment experience that really pushes the boundaries of the technology and the visual like level of sophistication that we have to the point where I was uh, making a very positive reference of how often it actually breaks down because you know that might be sort of conceived as a negative from a consumer standpoint for us as those that want to push the boundaries of entertainment the idea that you're pushing it so far that it kind of breaks like every day or so for a couple of times means that they're really pushing every possible envelope and when you get in those ride vehicles and you see the level of the visualization and the level of these holographic style displays and the, the way they're moving you and your body around. It's beyond any kind of other ride that I think anybody's ever been on. It's a really incredible experience. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of layers there. Yeah. Um, the, um, I mean, Disney, uh, the parks in general, you could argue are all virtual realities. I mean, it's sort of the point. You step into one right. of those places and you feel different. You're in a different place. The, but it's not just the architecture. It's not just the pavement. It's the people. It's the the you know the the cast, the the, the staff there that we refer, refer to as cast. All of that is about just creating this this kind of other world, and um, and all those layers add up. And 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 what that means is the people bring kind of a different attitude toward it. They they kind of get into it and put on wacky ears and things like that, and sure. and live a different life. And then when you step into Galaxy's Edge, it's it's its own world and and again even more layers the sound the, the things that you don't even notice the way the colors <clears throat> the way the colors work to to deal with your perspective and uh it's just it's it's pretty insane the obsessive <laughs> detail well, that goes into creating that feeling one of the things that i really uh liked about that metaphor that you're talking about is on the rise of the resistance ride there is only a virtual line Meaning at some point within, and it may, this may have been your influence or other influences in the, in the Imagineering world, um, the idea that when you're now kind of entering into a movie, you're kind of living in this fantasy world, the idea of a line 
kind of breaks that illusion. So yeah. the only way you get on the ride is by having your special ticket, your fast pass or however you get on it and you show up when it's your time and you go in. So there's no queue. And that I thought is a really interesting kind of visual understanding of when people are wandering around Galaxy's Edge, they're wandering around Galaxy's Edge. They're not wandering around inside a theme park that happens to have Galaxy's Edge, which I thought was really smart. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, uh, uh, Scott Trowbridge was the, the leader of that project, and, and he's a real uh, uh, advanced thinker in every way. And, and I mean, everything from the merchandise to the food to the cast to the, you know, if you go up and ask them, uh, you know, where do you live, you're not going to hear, I live in Santa Monica. Yeah, they don't <laughs> live in Pasadena, absolutely. <laughs> right. They're they from live. everywhere. They're from Batu. They're from Tatooine. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And my friends are the Ewoks over yeah. there. Right. Exactly. And you'll never get them off script. They're right there. And yeah. even to the people that are in the merchandise shops, everything. It's just, mm -hmm. it's trying to be this seamless thing for, you know, they reward people who are really into it. People who love, you know, mm -hmm. kind of stepping into another world. They really try to reward that and, and okay. make it. A real well, and, that, and that seems to be broadly what's now happening in this sort of digital layer that we are yeah. now continually referring to as the metaverse. The idea that <laughs> this is reality. Sorry, Charlie, I know I had to go there. This is a new reality, right? It's a digital reality, but it is just as real for people. You know, we can go back to the, Minecraft, the first Minecraft generation when they're in that world playing that game. They are in that world. They are no longer just watching a television and, and touching a controller. And these are really interesting things that goes all the way back to the ethos of, of Walt Disney himself, right? The idea that a theme park is a themed world that you enter into and why Main Street is so important is you need that transition point from the real world into his meta world. But Main Street is your spawn point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, God, it's it's lovely to have you here. What's what's cooking in your world? What, what are you? Oh, man, uh, lots of stuff. Lots of crazy stuff. Um, we're continuing to think about new display devices. We're continuing to think about uh, in the, in the R and D side of things. Uh, in the ride world, they're uh, working on some amazing new uh, attraction ideas. Um, you know, things that it takes a few years to build an attraction. So you have all these stages that you've been in. COVID was incredibly disruptive for us, but we're really kind of back on track now and back. Everything is chugging along at its, its normal way. So it's the it's the, the usual thing. I, I, I kind of bounce, you know, from thing to thing about 50 times every day uh, as I, I understand what's going on in all the all the kind of technical worlds that I live in. That's great. Amazing. You have to use VR in <clears throat> very specific ways in uh, themed attraction, obviously, because there's no way to really put people in headsets. Yeah. You know, ha and, you know, for set aside, um, you know, the, the health issues, it, it just the throughput issue is just too huge. You'd have to have 500 yeah. people attending a thousand headsets to get anywhere near the throughput for a theme park. Yeah. But um, you find all sorts of other ways. Yeah, of yeah. weaving XR technology throughout so that it kind of becomes just part of the toolkit that you use to create the illusions. We just did a, uh, I think this patent is issued. Um, Quinn Smithwick, one of our, our optical geniuses, um, developed this idea that you can have um, probably up to six people sitting in a ride vehicle and they just look ahead at the world and each sees a unique stereo image as they look out into the world. And um, it has to do with a lot of you know, projection and alignment and tracking and all these kinds of things. It's just astounding how well it works. You don't put anything on, you just sit down and look around. That's, your, that's what you have to bring to the table. And so each person can have, like I said, their own 3D view so that we can do truly AR on top of physical right. objects aligned with them as you move through space and it's that's a pretty fun one we haven't decided what we're going to do with it yet but that's good we, really we were just fooling around talking about the hollow ride guys who ted and i both saw yesterday and they're working on something they called the motorverse yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well and john to your point 
you know, uh, when, and I've talked about this for years, when, when I talk about simulator ride vehicles, they're essentially extraordinarily large VR headsets, where instead of having <laughs> one person in the headset at a time, you build a gigantic VR headset and you put, you know, a hundred people, when you talk about the Avatar ride in Orlando at Animal yeah. Kingdom, I think it's 190 or close to 200 people every six minutes or so that they cycle through this gigantic virtual reality simulator that has full six stop. You sit on these kind of, you know, motorbike sort of things that end up being the metaphor for the dragon. And you literally fly the, 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 you know, the Bantu around the universe. And at some point it feels so real that your body is just like, oh my God, this is actually happening to me. And then yeah. that's virtual reality, right? But it's at little, scale. Yeah. Those little uh, things that you sit on, they have they change shape a little bit as you're moving. They breathe. They yep. actually have materials that appear to be completely solid. But then, as as the transformation happens, as you're you're sort of going into that that uh, your, your, your the world of Avatar, the, the 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 sort of bike you're sitting on turns into to that creature, and mm -hmm. uh, it breathes. It moves. Uh, there's there's wind as you're flying. There's scent as you go right. through things and. And there are just all those layers that, that we try to keep very subtle. So it's not like a, you know, one of those carnival rides, but, but just sort of continuing to build on the illusion that you're actually there. And, and, and that thing of just transporting people, giving people, you know, step out of this. We, we have enough of this world every day that we're in. Let's go step into another world. This is fantastic uh, uh, kind of cool world. And, and, you know, the other one that I think is, uh, well, it's certainly become a, a deep joy and love spot for a lot of, of Disney patrons is the soaring ride. It used to be yeah. soaring over California. Now it's soaring over the globe. Uh, and we did that a couple of weeks ago as well. And oh, yeah. digital right. technology, I feel like I got to play a little small part in that because the red cameras, the high resolution cameras that I was yeah. a part of were used to create that illusion. And it all, is it all an illusion at scale? I mean, you feel like you're in this hang glider. Again, they're putting what, 70, 80 people in at a time. And when you're doing it, you lose the fact that this is just a ride. It's it's yeah. truly a simulation, and yeah. this stuff is just getting better and better, right? Like as and on that one, experience. on that one, uh, uh, some folks that I work, you know, my, my teams, uh, you know, you, you you say, okay, we'll go get a camera, we'll stick it on a helicopter and fly it around. But in fact, what we did was got five red mm -hmm. cameras, yep. to align them properly so that they could be fused together in an image, and then we did. This this uh, this thing where we digital or they're already digital, but we took each of those five cameras and uh, stabilized them electronically, and then merged all of those those images together, stitched them together properly, so that their perspective is correct. And and even you know the rig is probably I don't know two feet wide by yeah, it's the size of like a small refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so you actually do have slightly different viewpoints for each one of those. So you have to actually correct for all of that for things that are that are close. So you do all of that stuff. Again, you never talk about that because that's not what we're what we're selling. We're selling this transporting experience. But but to to do that at the level that we do that, it's crazy the level of subtle um, obsessive technology that goes into it. Uh, just to give you you know so nothing gets in the way of you in that scene. Right. And and uh, in in a bunch of those scenes, there, there's some you know, uh, ILM did a bunch of the work in some of those. Some of those are completely synthetic. All of them have augmentation in them. But again, all of it is about just keeping you in that story and and keeping you, uh, uh, you know, focused on that that transported experience that you're in. Yeah. Well, and then linking the ride vehicle per se, or in this case, the virtual hang glider, to the nuances of yeah. the movement of the flying, so it is yeah. so precise that your brain and your body feel like you are really flying. That is to me the artistry of it all. It's like, yes, there's the artistry of creating the visual, but the artistry of linking the visual to your physical body and the ride vehicle preciseness. And again, that's kind of where the Rise of the Resistance takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. You know, like Star Tours does a really good job. Smuggler's Run does it even better because they had another 25 years of dev. But when you go to Rise of the Resistance, the way they're connecting your body to that experience is, yeah. And th these are all the tenets of virtual reality that are getting better and better as we see the, you know, the sensors in the headset getting more and more sophisticated. They know where you are in space, which then brings us to this understanding that we can create simulations. You know, in, in my world, we always talk about the holodeck because that's where I, you know, I come from the Star yeah. Trek world, you come from the Star Wars world, we're all in the Star world, right? So 
the idea of building this hollow deck at home is starting to become more and more real and more and more logical and cost effective. So obviously yeah. Disney is going to play in that world in in some fashion quite robustly, which is exciting. I think for all of us as fans, regardless of where we work, you know, it's we're just fans of it. What's, what's, what's kind of cool? What's going on? Uh, Star Wars? Sorry, go ahead, John. Um, uh, one of the things kind of cool about when you you talk about that M word, the, the metaverse, uh, um, you know, when when people companies talk about okay, let's go drape a digital world over the real world. It's kind of daunting because the real world is pretty big, <laughs> and, and where do you start? And how do you deal with all those special cases everywhere you go and make it into something that that feels connected and, and really works and feels relevant to where you are, since you're not really going to know exactly where you are or necessarily the, a lot about the context of that. The nice thing for us is that we actually we own these worlds, and and it, people show up expecting you know levels of magic and levels of fantasy. And so we already have an audience that's ready and a place that's ready. And we've been doing that for a long time. You know, we, we do like precision projection onto our castles for uh, nighttime spectaculars where we transform them with light and things like that. And we already do a lot of those things. And we, we actually have some of those the games that we've been experimenting with. And, and so this for us, I feel like it's going to be, it kind of writes itself. <laughs> if you imagine what one would do with, with Disney next, you know, it, it, I think it kind of writes itself. Yeah. So I have... I have so many questions I want to ask you, John. We should book you for like an hour. Yes, I think that would be great. That was a real, this was a real mistake. I'm sitting here thinking. So I'm gonna, I want to end with a really big idea. Okay. Do you think at some point in the next couple of decades that guests will come to the park with augmented reality glasses that, that you either give them or rent to them or that they run off their own app and have a truly magical experience which is infinitely plastic that Disney can almost program every day that would combine the real world of the park which as we said is sort of a fantasy place and add that additional layer it seems to me a, a layer like that in the hands of um, the Disney company could really define what that medium is yeah well you know, we, the, the three of us on this call have been doing this for a minute or two, and, and we've, we've had our hopes dashed over and over. <laughs> oh, no, I, we're in science fiction land here. None of us, to be clear, none of us are ever going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, it's hard to imagine that, that, you know, when you, you know, if you're in this industry and you see where, where devices are going and you see the progress that's being made, I think you have to assume that, that we're not that far from, you know, something that's sort of glasses-ish form factor. That you could wear for hours at a time rather than minutes at a time um you could imagine that working and when when that gets there you know we, we've done a lot of building displays ourselves and everything sure. but i think we're probably not going to build our own displays but because others are doing a great job of that. yeah of course and uh and and so we're you know a few years not 10 a few years away from something wearable and when that exists, then you know that's what we do for a living. You know, we, we create amazing <laughs> fantasy worlds for for the, the systems that are out there. And and I think that you will definitely have that. Yeah. It, it's so exciting to see both XR technology and the amazing combination of story and stagecraft that only Disney can bring. Um, John, we're going to have you back. We should do a longer show. Um, I know Ted, Ted's on a deadline. Um, the podcast will be up in a couple of hours and uh, we'll be in touch. It's great to see you uh, all be in yeah, Thanks, John. Thanks, John. It's lovely to talk with you. And I totally agree with Charlie that, you know, a good hour deep dive, I think our listeners would completely, because we just teased a lot of things. Know. Right? So we'll do more. This is great. And, and it's so sad that we're, you know, 60 year old fanboys here, but uh, <laughs> here we are, right. building this up for decades. So three, three Peter Pads all lined up in a row. That's all right. Amazing. All right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank Thanks you. Everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you.